A truss structure rests on four pin supports. We want to calculate the forces acting in each member and the reactions at the supports due to the applied load. The presence of four supports might suggest that the truss is statically indeterminate. But a more detailed analysis reveals that in fact, we have a statically determinate structure. The truss structure comprises eight joints, eight members, and eight support reactions. By writing two equilibrium equations for each of the eight joints, we establish 16 equilibrium equations in total. The sum of unknown forces is the combination of the eight members and eight support reactions, amounting to 16 unknown forces. Given that the number of equilibrium equations equals the number of unknown forces, we can deduce that the system is statically determinate. Examining the geometry of the truss, I see a few zero force members being present. So, to simplify the solution process, I will use the following steps to solve the problem. 1. I will identify and remove the zero force members from the structure. 2. I apply the joint equilibrium equations to the joints of the remaining truss to determine the non zero member forces. 3. Once the member forces are determined, I use joint equilibrium equations to determine the non-zero support reactions. To identify the zero force members, we can begin by positioning the Cartesian coordinate system at joint G. Observing the forces at this joint, we see that three member forces are present, yet only one of these forces has a component in the Y direction. Specifically, it's the Y component of the force in member FG that exists in this direction. Given that the total forces in the y direction at this joint must sum to zero, it implies that the y component of the force in member FG is indeed zero. With the y component of this angled force being zero, its x component must be zero as well. Hence, we deduce that member FG is a zero force member. So, let's remove the member from the structure. Next, the Cartesian coordinate system is positioned at joint F. Observe that joint F contains only one force each in the X and Y directions. Given that the total forces in the X direction must balance out to zero, it implies that the force in member EF is zero. Likewise, the requirement for the forces in the Y direction to sum up to zero indicates that member CF does not carry any force. Consequently, members EF and CF can be removed from the diagram. From this simplified diagram, we can conclude that since no forces are acting on support C, the reaction forces at the pin support are zero. Next, we position the Cartesian coordinate system at joint E. Given that the force in member DE is the sole force exhibiting a component in the X direction, it follows that DE is a zero force member. Consequently, this implies that BE must be a zero force member as well. According to this simplified diagram, since there are no forces acting at joint B, the reaction forces at the pin support are zero. So, we are left with this truss, which can be easily analyzed using the method of joints. This inclination angle equals 39.81 degrees. To determine the member forces acting at joint D, first, we draw the joint's free body diagram. Then, we write the joint equilibrium equations and solve them for the unknown forces. The sign associated with each force reveals if the member is experiencing tension or compression. A positive sign signifies that the member is under tension, while a negative sign indicates that the member is in compression. Therefore, here, both members are in compression. Let's label each truss member with its corresponding member force. Observe that angle beta is 50.19 degrees. Next, we'll determine the support reactions at joints A and H. This is the free body diagram of joint A. The equilibrium equations for this joint are. Upon resolving these equations, the unknown values are found to be. Moving on, this is the free body diagram for joint H. 
The joint equilibrium equations reveal that the vertical reaction force is zero, and the horizontal reaction force is negative 10 kN. So, we have a total of three non-zero support reactions in the truss. There are two reaction forces at joint A, and one reaction force at joint H. Here is the summary of the results of the analysis. This horizontal member is subjected to a compressive force of 10 kN, and the inclined member carries a compressive force of 15.62 kN. The remaining truss members carry no force. 